All right. Looks like we are live. Let's see if I get the little message from the book. Not quite yet. We're still waiting for Facebook. All right. There it is. Hey, Facebook friends. Hey, guys. Hi. So you all know me, Sarah. And uh, what you don't, well, you probably do know. She's been alive with us. This is Alexis Redmond from Purposeful Indulgence. Hi. Hey, Mom. Hey, Chrissy. All right. So what are we doing today, Miss Alexis? So, since Lauren is resting, I thought we would just have a little fun and see if Sarah can follow directions. Okay. Are you ready, Sarah? Do you want to tell them we're doing this? Okay. So a few months back, uh, Alexis was doing a live. Or she's like, all right, let's um, everyone grab a piece of paper and something to draw with. And I'm like, sitting there, and I had a napkin and a highlighter. I'm like, okay, I can do this. And so we're sitting there doing it. She's talking you through how to draw an item. And at the very end of it all, it ended up being a bee. And I, I did not get a bee. I actually got a pig. <laughs> and Lauren and Penny were also watching your live doing it, too. And also had a bee. Oh, they had bees and you had a pig. Oh, okay. Let's see if you can follow directions tonight. We Let will try. Paper. What? Let me see your paper. Okay. Put your paper like portrait mode. Okay. Okay. All right, Sarah. First, look at your paper and divide it into fourths, like half, top fourth, bottom fourth. So like they were stacked on top of each other. Don't actually draw anything. Just visualize okay. that. That's going to be part of the directions. Okay. In the top quarter of the page, draw two triangles at a diagonal on either side. Two triangles on a diagonal? Mm -hmm. So, like, instead of two triangles straight up and down, at a diagonal. Oh, okay. Slightly tilted. And that was way more directions than you're allowed to have, so stop asking. <laughs> She's like, I'll just ask, she'll tell me. She can't control her. <laughs> okay. We're like, uh-oh, math. Good? Are you good? Yeah. Okay. Inside those triangles, draw a small triangle in each one, but the bottom of it should share the bottom of the large triangle. Nope. All right, now you're gonna draw a large circle in the middle two fourths of the page and it should connect to the two triangles. not a very good circle. Under that circle, you're going to draw a half circle, slightly wider than the large circle. Yes, I am using crayons. Okay, Laura? The flat part down. What color are you using? Blue green. Oh, okay. I like all the colors in the crayon box. All right, I'll probably change it up in a little bit. Okay, now in the bottom quarter, I want you to draw an arc from corner to corner. Does it have to touch the second circle? Nope. Stop asking me questions. <laughs> I just realized I answered you. <laughs> okay. Now you're going to do, listen closely, four rectangles, 
two are going to go on the top of the half circle and two on the bottom, but one in each quadrant. What? Four rectangles in the half circle. Not in the half circle. You have a half circle. Yeah. I want you to draw like a two inch rectangle coming from the top right, the top left, the bottom right, and the bottom left. My mom would like to know what I, years you taught. What years? What I, three. Oh, yeah. Why? Because I'm using words like quadrant and fractions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I taught all the way up to sixth grade by the end, so I'm sorry. Um, all right, where are we? Uh, the four rectangles. Divide each rectangle in half and color the part that's not connected to the circle. Hard to believe I have an art degree here. Okie doke. All right, back up to the big circle. At the bottom of the big circle, I want you to draw a stretched out U. The bottom of the big circle is stretched out you. At the top of the big circle, I want you to draw two dots side by side. Like kid periods. You know, like when kids write and they make their period like this? That's At the top of the big circle, you said? At the top, yes, in the top part of the inside of the big circle. Giving too many details here. You know what, Daddy, I came close. I came close. Daddy's like, I would have torn that paper in pieces by now. <laughs> I'm looking at this being like, oh, I'm bad. And in the center of the big circle, I want you to draw a big, uh, another circle. About a two-inch circle. In the center? Of the big circle. Okay. And in the center of that circle, I want you to draw two smaller circles side by side. When you start to see it. And it's missing one thing, but I think you can probably guess what that is. So you should add it before you show everyone. To the bottom or because we're only seeing it from face on? Yeah, like it's sticking out the side. Okay. Well, I think I did it right this time, everyone. Do you want me to show mine first or you want to show yours first? Uh, let me show mine so that way they don't laugh too hard. I think it probably looks good. Oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> when I was in my big circle, I went too high. I'm like, oh, time to cross over. <laughs> oh, it's really cute. Let me see the bottom. Let me see what it's standing on. Okay. Oh, it's jumping in the air. That's really cute. Okay, so <laughs> that's the original picture. <laughs> <laughs> you came pretty close, but Sarah. This is a pig. Yes. <laughs> I had a feeling as soon as you did the four rectangles, I'm like, I'm being made fun of. <laughs> well, I asked Lauren. I texted her because I had three of them. And I was like, pick which one I should do. And she was like, definitely do the pig. Because last time, Sarah drew a bee that was looked like a pig. She thought it was a pig. Oh, my God. That's because I went the wrong way with the oval. <laughs> So there's our pig. 
Do you want to do another Thank one? You. Sure. All right, let's do hey another guys, one. Are you doing this at home too with us? Yeah, if you're doing it at home, make sure you post your pictures after the live so we can see what they look like. And don't oh, fix What? Everyone in the audience, don't fix your picture if you're drawing along with us. Don't fix it before you post it. Because it's just more fun if you don't fix it. What kind of brownies, Laura? Lauren said she's eating brownies. Oh. All right. I am ready. Okay. I don't know. Is everyone else ready? Sorry if you guys can hear my dogs from the background. <clears throat> Envision your paper in fourths again, stacked on top of each other, and draw a big upside down U in the in three fourths of the page. The bottom three fourths. Yes. All right. Okay. Next, in the bottom half, draw a smaller upside down U whose bottom shares the large one. All right. Inside that upside down U, make a bunch of short lines, like half inch lines, fill it up with half inch lines, vertical. Okay. I'm doing vertical, Lauren. I'm listening. Okie doke. Okay. About... In the second quarter, no, let me think. Above that little upside down U, go up about two finger spaces and draw a forward J and a backward J back to back. And then hold that thought because I just, I put something on to print and it's not printing. Hang on. <clears throat> I am mostly concentrating on which color I'm going to pick next. Um, so fun story, Lauren, my mom and my brother-in-law all decided to clean the house at this same time, but different, not together. And they threw out all the kids coloring stuff. So I bought all these crayons. And while I was there, I got myself 120 pack. So why not? <laughs> Does it have the macaroni and cheese color? Yes, that's my favorite color, by the way. Yes. That one was always coveted when I was teaching. Like, you know, the kids were like, macaroni and cheese. Meanwhile, when you really make macaroni and cheese, it's never that color. But, you know, no. it should say craft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> cheese powder all right at the top of the two j's i want you to make an upside down triangle and color it in all right put a circle around that group that you just drew
Put two dots side by side above the circle. Now on each side of the upside down oval, the big one, I want you to put a circle in the top quarter. In the top quarter above the circle. Above the big upside down U. You said I'm making a circle? You're making little circles, yeah. Little circle. Just one? One on each side. Okay. What do you have? Um, so it looks like a bear with a rain cloud. <laughs> what do you all have, guys? Oh, I went too far on. It's like a grumpy bear. <laughs> like, kind of like a carrot. I give you my directions, though. It's okay. I'm not very good at them. <laughs> I even gave you extra directions. <laughs> That's funny. Although, you know, I looked up, I couldn't find any prompts that were like there was lots of like directed drawing but lots of like I would show you what to do and then you would do it so I had to do it and write my own direction so this is like a combined effort <laughs> 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 my ability to explain myself versus your ability to listen I don't know who won that's pretty it was like mine looks like a wreath that's that's pretty cute. Do you, you don't happen to still have your bee, do you? Probably not. It was a napkin, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. I'm sure I have the picture saved um, when I sent it to Lauren. That's really funny. So, are you guys still running a sale on your page? We are, yes. Um, right now, with the coupon code POPPY, you can get 50% off of everything site-wide and it runs through Sunday. Through Sunday. So yeah. I shopped Poppy and my package is coming Friday. I thought it was coming tomorrow. And it just I just got the update that it's coming, I think Friday. Or maybe I thought it was coming today and it's coming tomorrow. But whenever I get it, I'm gonna go live and open it. Ooh live because I'm quite excited for this package. Um, I have to tell you that, you know, I've shopped the website like several times. Sometimes you guys send me some goodies, which is amazing and so appreciated. Um, but what I did when I shopped was I was like, okay, whose birthdays and what events do I have in the next six months? And then I kind of went through and I was like, oh, I'm going to get this for that person. I'm going to get this for that person. Cause honestly, like you can't beat it for 50% off. No, you really can't. I mean, such good stuff. And I treated myself to the cloche, the, it's not a cloche, the glass dome thing. Yeah. It's a yeah. cloche. Is it a cloche? Or yeah. like cheese tray? Cut. Well, I'm going to use it for when I make charcuterie because you know how you put out your charcuterie tray and then your cheese gets like crusty after a while because yeah. it goes to air? The cheese is going to go under the dome. I'm excited for that. Ooh. Hmm. Maybe that's what I need to do with mine. Because I got one as well, but I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I think like when I do charcuterie, all the cheeses are going to go on there so I can cover it up. Because I hate that, that you like put it out and it's like not even out that long. And then the edges get gross. Yeah. I'm excited for that. And I bought some stuff for myself and I'm very excited for that. And I I'm did. excited for you, too. I, I'm so excited. I can't wait to open my package. Very much so. 
And I already, you guys sent me that medallion and I already hung it up in the kitchen because I took my Christmas decorations down and I was like, took my Christmas decorations down and moved a bookshelf that was like in the kitchen for just Christmas stuff. And then the wall was completely blank. And I was like, oh, and thank you to my friends from Poppy Boutique. I can cover up my wall. So that was fabulous. I'll have to post a picture of that. It's I got one for myself too. I think I want to hang lights from it and turn it into a chandelier. Oh, see my, what I think would be really cute for it, but it's great on the wall now, but I'm thinking like, uh, you know, I always decorate my front porch and I think it would make a super cute side table on top of like a terracotta pot that was like dry brushed white. And then you could even wrap it in rope. That would be pretty too. And then obviously there's holes in it. So you maybe wouldn't want to put drinks or anything straight on it. But if you had a cute tray, it could sit right on top of there and it would be like the cutest like boho style side table. Oh yeah, that really would be. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought when I thought it, so I'm excited for that. You can also put, like, a little skinny sheet of glass on there if you do want to use it, though. Yeah, I did think of that, and but, I mean, I have a place where I could get glass, but the idea of getting glass, well, okay, so I have two little boys, so the idea of getting a thin <laughs> shape of a circle home to my house in one piece is one thing, um, and second layering it on top of something that's layered on top of something else it that would be really pretty for probably 10 minutes at my house so we have to go with like unbreakables i understand <laughs> they would race each other up the front porch and inevitably the table would probably go crashing over so we need to be able to put it back together <laughs> yeah. well i don't even have people in my house i have dogs and anything breakable is in this room. It, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, like bulls in a china shop, pretty much. Oh, my gosh. I'm actually, um, I was playing around with the website. I might get more. I haven't decided. On the website? I pretty much, yeah, I pretty the, much have, like, one of everything right now. I looked, oh, I wore the, um the brown plaid shawl thing what is it called what is the technical name for it cape oh the, the scarf yeah, the, the one, yeah yeah i wore that yesterday like dressed up it was really pretty oh i saw that and the earrings yes and trying to think what else oh I have, wait, I want to share an idea. Hold on. Gonna try not to cut myself. <clears throat> this, you guys still have these, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So this is a really great price on the website right now. And I was thinking, I was just at a baby shower and I know we have a wedding coming up and I thought, I think I'm going to get one of these for the wedding and put a bottle of champagne wrapped in tulle inside of it, probably sitting on like a greenery, probably like a little wreath or some kind of greenery and put a candle in the top of the champagne bottle, wrap it up and put it in here. And then it would be like housewarming celebration. I love that. And use it as like, it's a gift in itself, but then like as a vessel in which to give the gift. I think that'd be super cute and dangerous because that's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was the one thing I wasn't a fan of, but I absolutely love mine and I love to decorate mine. And for um, the Monday, that was one of my ideas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Campaign? Oh, no. I, I have Fireball. Oh, my God. Okay, so you want, you want to know about Fireball? I don't drink Fireball, but I hosted Girls' Night here at the studio for um, some other moms, like my little guy's friend's moms. And um, the one mom in our group text mentioned that she drinks Fireball because everyone was bringing, like, 
wine and we made like a cocktail and we had like snacks and then we made projects. And so she mentioned in the group text that she drinks Fireball and everybody that came brought her the little mm -hmm. bottle of Fireball. Yeah. And at the top of my steps in here, I have six bottles of Fireball, like the little gas station. I mean, do they sell them? Yeah. 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 So six of those. And I'm mm -hmm. like, who is going to come? You have to come and visit me then and just drink all my Fireball, I guess, Sarah. <laughs> Or I have to come visit you, I'll bring it along. Because I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with all this? And then my kids come upstairs and they're like, Mom, what are you doing with all this fireball? I'm like, well, I'm not drinking it. And then there was 10,000 questions of, does it really burn? Does it really burn? Does it taste like fire? What does it? I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hide the fireball. Or answer all the questions. You know what you should do? Get them the candy fireballs and be like, this is what it tastes like. Well, that's what I told them because my mom always has like that retro candy. And I was like, it's like when Nana gives you a fireball, that's what it tastes like. But it burns the whole way down yeah. and probably, you know, on the way out, too. I don't know. I don't drink that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year for trick-or-treating, Lauren moved into a very large child-friendly neighborhood. So I forced my um, now husband to drive us around, and I rode in the back, and we were throwing um, the little mini fireballs at parents when they were walking their kids and, like, passing out hard seltzers. Oh, that's cute. So much fun doing it. That's so fun. That's really cute. And then the next day um, was not so fun. I bet. Because we were drinking as we went along, and I sent Lauren a picture of a greasy burger at lunchtime, and she sent me the same picture of a greasy burger because she was also in the same boat. <laughs> that's funny did you get your greasy burger oh yeah <laughs> thanks to DoorDash I've never tried that really mm -hmm. oh big fan um like we use Grubhub DoorDash I just tried Postmates no mostly Uber Eats so I feel like quality of drivers isn't there Oh, all of those deliver from wherever? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, as long as you're willing to set, they'll drive it. Nice. Yeah. That'd be good for the baseball field. <laughs> Have you done it there? No. Um. So, I haven't even thought of it yet. To, like, DoorDash to the baseball fields, but a lot of them are within distance. So, yeah, I guess you could door dash to the baseball field when all they have is hot dogs and peanuts or hot dogs and cold nacho cheese. Ugh. Last, um, one of Raymond's last games, I had brought, do you know what a fiesta dot is? No. It's like the Mexican pieces they used to give us for school lunches. Okay. They're called fiesta dots, and you can get them at like Fast Track and uh, A-plus gas stations as well. And one of our local pizza shops started carrying them. So I bought a 12-pack, and I brought them to the ball field, and my sister did not bring margarita. And we sat there and had our fiesta does. <laughs> well, that's delicious and fun. <laughs> so much better than concession stand food. Like, at the yeah. beginning of the season, it's like, oh, nachos. And by the end of the season, you're like, oh, my God, I cannot eat fake cheese one more time. Oh, Lauren's like, I have never. Can you see the comments from over there? I can't. Oh, okay. No, I can't. All I see is me and you. So it's like just me and you are hanging out. <laughs> or you and I. Oh. Here till my mom's like, oh, yeah, we call them sippy cups. And Lauren's like, I have never. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe. I found a new color that I really like. This one is called Marvelous. Oh, color with it. I want to see what it looks like. <coughs> it's kind of like um, a pinkier version of um, uh, magenta. It's darker than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought Are it was you darker. And I'm like, that's a new favorite. 
Okay, so I have a question for you. I'm yeah. ready to launch Valentine's stuff and also decorate for Valentine's, like for myself. What is your color preference or anyone who's watching? I would love to know color preference for Valentine's Day. Like, you know, the traditional black, white, red or like a pink, mint, green, yellow, purple kind of conversation hearts colors or like uh, neutrals and kind of like shabby, um, shabby chic, like mauves and sage and stuff like that. So that's what I actually did last year. It was like, um, I did a lot of like craft paper cutting colors, like um, taupes and browns with whites and then uh, more mauvey pinks. That's what you did last year. Yeah. I have stairs in my Valentine box. And from the past couple of years, I have like a little bit of everything. And I'm like, I'm not in love with any of these, any one of these colors. Not that I'm not, I don't, I don't attachment to any of them but they don't all go together you know how like you slightly change things from year to year and then you're like oh great this doesn't kind of go well I do anyways this doesn't go with that so I'm just curious what other people like if it's like classic or I'm kind of leaning toward either like the pastels with like pink mint green kind of vibe tealish or the neutrals with the shabby yeah so Tammy is saying in the comments that she likes the traditional, um, the red, the black, and the off-white. Oh, off and Betty says she doesn't decorate for Valentine's Day, but she does like the pinks. Pinks. I think Mama they says she adds holiday heart picks um, to her arrangements. But what colors, Mom? Um, probably red glitter. Knowing my mom, yes. Everything glitter. I love that about her. If it's not a leopard print, it's glitter. Well, leopard print's a neutral, so. Lauren says she does wine and mauve tones. Wine? Oh, normal red. Okay. So maybe I just have to do a little bit of, like accents of everything and let people choose. I kind of like it that way whenever I can think out all the different ways and then I don't have to pick any of them. <laughs> I could just be like, you choose, have all different options. So that's what I'm working on right now. I stress out about, because I do my own nails, I stress out about my nail colors for holidays. So I could totally see that. And I didn't think ahead to that. I never have my nails painted because usually they're covered in paint, like not nail polish. Um, but they finally like grew enough to paint them. And so the other night I was like, you know what? I had just got done cleaning the bathroom and I'm like, I'm going to reward myself and sit here and paint my nails like with the gel and stuff. <clears throat> and I chose a color and it looked one way coming out of the bottle. And then this is what I got. Oh, but I like that. It's like, oh, it's not quite like I love olive green and this is more of like a almost a celery yeah or like retro avocado appliance i don't know maybe not even quite it's i don't know i'm not in love with it but and it chipped already <laughs> i was going for like that sweater weather kind of look with my nails uh, i don't know if i could show it like oh, that's right so it's like a navy blue a mauve and then this color right here it comes out clear, but when my nails are cold, it starts to darken. So at the tips, they're dark right now. I see. So is it um, is it the color changing then? Like yeah, I didn't realize that right away. It's, I was really freaked out by it. I'm like, why does my nails appear darker in this room and not the other room? Oh, that is, yeah. So is it, do you do dip or? Uh, no, I, I just do the gel. Yeah, me too. I can't get a, get the hang of the dip. I bought it, but I don't have the patience for it. I did it, and I was really good at it, but I started becoming allergic to it. Oh, no. I know. I was, um like, respiratory, um, so it felt like I had a cold for, like, four days after doing my nails every single time. I want, That's, like, kind of creepy of whatever's in there that 
yuck. Yeah. And they were saying that this is pretty normal and it's called a dip flu. And I'm like, I don't want it. So I kept doing dip all the way up to my wedding and then I switched to gel. Yeah. I like gel because it's so fast. Yeah. It stinks to take it off, though. Do you have one of those steamers that you put your fingers in? Steamer? Yeah, I got it on Amazon for 20 bucks. You put a little acetone in there and you just let your nails sit and it warms up and it steams the gel right off. It takes like 20 minutes to do each, both hands. No, uh Yeah. I don't have one. My friend's always like, okay, you have to file the top and then wrap each one and then you put those little clippy things on your fingers and then you have to sit there and wait. And I'm like, um, I, you had me until sit there and wait because I don't, I don't have time to sit there and wait. Like, I don't. No, not that I don't have time to sit there and wait. I choose to not sit there and wait. Like, I don't want to wait. I'm not a good waiter. I don't even like stop signs. I don't like to wait for anything. So those little clippy things also like just like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Not fun. Like it's enough to yeah, okay, we don't wait. <laughs> it's enough to make me not want to paint my nails. Like I'm already this one's chipped and I'm like, gosh darn it. I don't want to have to change these things. <laughs> Cause then I'm gonna have to sit there and wait. Ah. I um so when I was doing the dip I got into it um during the shutdown and my nail tech wasn't doing nails and so I got good at it so I bought the light so I could do my nails really fast and it typically because it's to myself it takes like a whole two hours to take it off and put it on file it down and then coat it and so it wasn't a hard transition for me that get into the gel and it's a lot faster yeah the gel is a lot faster do you just get your colors on Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. I bought like two sets of colors recently and I just, my only complaint is that they come out of the bottle looking one way and then they dry slightly different color. Like this, this was like a light sage green and this is not, it's too, I don't know what, I'm not loving it though. Was it the Beetle Company? Yes. I have the same problem with them. I've been using the Madolans. Madolans. Um, it's like they do 36 different colors in their packs, but I absolutely love them. 36 different colors? Yeah. No, I just had like a six pack of that one. And then the other one I bought was Jellen. G-L-L-E-N, I think. And yeah, I don't know. I'm glad you had the same problem, though, so it wasn't just me. No, I, I wore it to Thanksgiving, and it was one one of my fingers, for some reason, one of the colors, it was so thick that it was, like, peeling off while I'm sitting at the table. Mm. So I went home, and I redid my nails. That's so sick. luckily, all I had to do was rip it off. So the steamer for the acrylic, I mean, for the, when you put the acetone in there, does it stink if you, like, put acetone to steam? No. Like, you can kind of smell it. it it's no different than um, if you were just to wrap it around your finger. Oh. Um, so but it's really not it a lot of fume. Like concentrate it since you're steaming it. Right. Hmm. Do you file them first on top? Yes. Because the top, will, the top coat won't come off if you don't. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look for that. Oh, it was life changing. Yeah, because who wants to sit and wait? Not this girl. <laughs> like, I'll sit there and I'll put up Netflix on my phone and I'll set it there on the Lazy Susan at the kitchen table and I'll like watch one of my shows. I mean, I do watch shows, but I don't, I always have to do something else. I don't know. I'm just, I, I think I just have a like, well, my friend will do my nails sometimes and she comes and when she does my nails, like, she does them like she she does her own and they're beautiful and she takes her time and she's always like filing them and like pushing the cuticles back i know you have to do those things but like and then she's like holding my hand forever and i'm just like oh my gosh when will this be over you have to sit there for so long I don't have the patience <laughs> yeah i love to go to my girlfriend vicky for my nails but she's been going through a lot like with their life, and I don't want to bother her. So I'm like, it's okay, I'll do them. When you're ready, give me a call. Yeah, I'm always like, uh, 
we should do a girls' night. Dun dun dun, and you should do my nails. <laughs> That's always what it is. I'm like, I'll buy wine if you want to come and paint my nails. <laughs> Lauren said, "Turn on, I'm a killer, and you'll be sucked in." I'll be sucked in. Well, okay. So, can I tell you what I'm watching now? Welcome to Plathville. Have you watched this? No. It's about this family in Georgia who raise their kids like completely um, away from like any technology. They didn't go to school. Like they lived on a farm and they didn't watch TV. They didn't talk on the phone. They didn't listen to the radio. Like there was no outside influence whatsoever. And now the kids are starting to grow up and like super resent their parents because they have no life skills, like as far as like yeah. skills and stuff like that. Um, and the one, like the oldest kid, well, the oldest doesn't even live. She's not even on the show. And then the next oldest, he got married and the family hates his wife. And so he like left the family. And then the next two, they went out on their own and the girl's only like 17 and she lives with her brother in an apartment because she hates her parents. It's like, that has sucked me in because I just can't believe the, like, the parents still don't see any error in their ways. That these is kids... it a documentary? No, well, it's a reality TV show. Because okay. I watched like Little People, Big World, the whole series, over like a couple months, and yeah. then I this was on there next, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll watch this, and now that's kind of like suck you in. Like you want to see what happens next because you're waiting for the parents to be like, Oh yeah, it's our fault. <laughs> you know, like, okay. But yeah. Welcome to Plathville. Welcome to Plathville. Yeah. All right. I wrote it down. What is it on? Discovery plus. Ooh, one of my favorites right there. Discovery plus. Do you, yeah. guys, you guys watch the true crime things on there? Don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I watch all the reality TV, like uh, 90 Day Fiance and all that stuff. That guy just got married. Which one? Oh, I can't remember his name. The one without the neck. He did? Yes, I just saw it in the news this morning. Aw, that's so nice for him and his cute little mom. Oh, I um, so I work from home. Uh, for a local dealership and all my coworkers, we all, they also work from home. So we use Microsoft teams to talk, which is kind of like messenger. And uh, they are all stuck into like my 600 pound life and everything. And <laughs> that's all we do is we talk about TV all day long. Uh, well, yeah, I could get into that. I, I like that. And I watched the entire series of sister wives and waited for oh family the entire series and then you know she finally did that. yeah that that one yeah <laughs> I couldn't believe they stayed as long as they did yeah oh I know and now there's only one left right yeah but it, I think she's even leaving oh yeah I didn't see that do you ever see the people on TikTok that make fun of them Oh, I love it. <laughs> and they like draw the eyebrows on and they're like, I hate crying. <laughs> Except that they cry all the time. It's really funny. I like the little parodies that people do. Oh, yeah. People are really creative on TikTok. Very. Very. Like, I felt bad. My sister's laid up from surgery. Can't can't make her laugh, right? And of course I'm on TikTok. Oh, this is great. I'm going to send this one to Lauren. This is great. I'm going to send this to Lauren. And then all of a sudden after like 12 different funny ones, I'm like, I just sent those all to Lauren. <laughs> and she has to like hold her belly and laugh. <laughs> Aww. I feel so bad. We actually, um, before you came into the room, because we're using the, um, the platform to go live, she was in here, and I, I can't remember what I said. I said something that made her laugh, and then I felt so bad. Cause you could just see, like, the tears and the laughter. Like, you know those tears came from pain, and you're like, I'm sorry. Mm. Aw. Oh, they want to know if you've seen Love is Blind. I have. Oh, 
obsessed. I wonder if there's any more of those I can watch. Hmm. I did. And I controlled myself today, though, because I was getting work done. And I'm like, you cannot turn any shows on because while I like to think I am the prime multitasker, hence I can't wait or like take my nail polish off. Um, I also can't focus quite as well while I'm watching TV. Big shocker. <clears throat> I am the queen of multitasking. Uh, I'm actually at my desk right now. I have my phone right here. I could be on the phone with a customer, typing an email, and paying attention to what's going on in chat while I have something playing on Netflix. I just, I can zone. Yeah, not me. Not me. And then I'm like, what am I making for dinner? What am I? I have to look on Love is Blind and see if I have, if I missed any of those. Because you know how sometimes they come out with new seasons or new, oh, okay. like, it's not all on the app's or the streaming at first, and you have to yeah. build. Have you seen the Cutie episode yet? I don't think so. Um, have you seen the newest people, the, set of, the, the third season? Um, who is it? Um, so this Alexa and Brendan. That doesn't ring a bell. Maybe I only watched the first two seasons. Okay. So you, to... I wasn't sure. I, was gonna, I didn't think I was going to like the third season because I wasn't really into them when they were in the pods. It was once they were out of the pods, I was hooked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever watched The Circle? No, I have it on my queue, though. It's good. I really like The Circle. That's the one where they're some people are catfishes and they have to like vote people out and all that. It's pretty good. I set up an echo. What did I say? Oh, because I used the A word. Sorry. Alexa. Oh. <laughs> oh, is she talking to you? Uh, no, Lauren. She's like, thanks. You set off my echo. Oh. <laughs> That happens a lot when I'm live. People, I'll be like, "Hey, I'm Alexis from Purposeful Indulgence," and people are like, "Oh, my thing heard you." Like, oh, I don't have one of those at my house, or it would go off all the time. I have them, um, but um, I only have like the video one, and that's so I could check in on the dogs when I'm not home because I'm with that dog mom. Oh, I could totally see that. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm video chatting the pups right now. Hold on. That's cute. Do they come to the video? Yeah. And do you, can you talk to them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it comes in handy, though. Like yesterday, uh, my mom brought the little guy after school. We weren't home, and he was picking something up, and he couldn't get the door unlocked. And so I hopped on the security camera and started talking to him. Scared the heck out of him because he was like, "Where? what, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> look up at the camera. I'm up here. He's like, okay, so that I had to walk him through. So they come in handy. Oh, my gosh. The other night, uh, we have the ring cameras outside. And the other night, I'm trying to let out my big dog. And a bunch of deer go running by in the front yard. I have a lot of wooded area where I live. And so I'm, like, pulling him back, getting him in the house. And then I go back out to get the meal. And now this buck just comes walking down our sidewalk like he was supposed to be there this whole time. I'm like, as you were, sir, I'm not going to bother you. I'm like, this guy, I'm a little nervous with him. He only has one antler, and I don't know why. Oh. So I'm thinking he might be a scrapper. Uh, so I go in, I grab my meal, and I turn around, and all of a sudden, they all just ran. Well, now I want to know what are they running from. So I peered out, and it looked like a German shepherd chasing them. So I'm, like, running across the street trying to catch someone's dog. I get close enough where I can finally see it because we don't have streetlights. And I'm realizing it's a coyote. I've never seen a coyote so big. Oh, my gosh. I thought you were going to say it was your dog. I never saw a coyote. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, it was easily 90 pounds. It was the size of a German Shepherd. Holy moly. And he was chasing the dogs. Yeah. He was chasing the deer. Oh, yeah. Chasing the deer. Wow. And when you look down the road, there were three more behind. I'm like, oh, they're in a pack. I need to go back inside. Yeah, really. Holy moly. I've never yeah. seen wild before. Really? 
a coyote. Yeah. yeah. Like we have, fo- have all over. we have foxes around here. Um, we have an albino deer that lives by us. Um, yeah. She hangs out like, I assume it's a she, she doesn't have any antlers. Um, she hangs out on the one hillside, like where you go up and down the highway. And I swear, like, she's like, let me see how many cars I can make slow down because yeah. they're on the hillside. People will pull over and take pictures of her. Like, but yeah, she's all white with a pink nose. Gosh, that's be really pretty. And really pretty and a little bit like freaky because you don't expect to see that, you know, like, just, right. but yeah, no coyotes though. I mean, I assume we probably have them because we're the same region of the country, but yeah. no, we have foxes and I don't know, groundhogs. Yeah. Our neighbors have um, this really big woodchuck that lives under their shed. And I'm amazed it hasn't caved in yet because of how big this thing is when it comes out. I'm like, it's got to be two in your floor. Wow. But we have a ton of wildlife here. We live in a neighborhood and we get deer that walk down our street. I mean, I've driven home from the shop and have had to stop as deer cross the main street here. And, but the river is like right behind our building. It's like two, so I'm sure they're coming for a drink, but. Well, that's true. Tammy is saying um, that they have coyote as well. No worries there about her little dog. I don't let my dogs out without a leash because of the coyotes. We were talking about coyotes and little dogs the one day on my page, and somebody sent me a picture of their little dog wearing like you know how you put a harness on your dog well her little dog had like it was kind of like a harness but like more vest like and it had spikes on it yeah so that i and a coyote like wouldn't get it wow they use those up in alaska with their little dogs so the eagles can't take them oh i didn't wow i've never seen one in person i just i see videos of it all the time yeah, well, she sent me the picture, and I was like, holy moly, that's, like, serious stuff. To He's, like, all spiked out so nobody can yeah. get it. Yeah, usually the coyotes I see are, like, 40, 50 pounds. They're not very big. Um, but this one that I saw, it, it blew my mind. It was as big as it was. It had to have been a koi dog of some sort. Wow. Now, will they wreak havoc in your neighborhood, like, on pets and stuff, or do they mostly stick to the wildlife? Um, so we haven't had any personal issues. However, last year I was finding, um, unfortunately, uh, because there are stray cats out there, mm-hmm. I was finding dead kittens in our yard. Yeah, it was pretty awful. Oh, and that's bad. Dead baby skunks, um, mostly the really, really small animals. Which makes sense if they're only 40 or 50 pounds. Maybe that's why that yeah. gets case in the deer. Was he going to take them all or what? I don't know. I don't know if like the deer was after him, so he went after them kind of thing. My mom, she's in the comments saying that deer, uh, they shed their antlers every year. But this guy, he's only had one antler for the last year or so. So I don't know if the other one grows or not. Maybe he's a unicorn and you just think he's a deer. Oh, that could be. Clean your glasses, Sarah. <laughs> We have this one buck um, that we see all the time. Easily 14 points. He's huge. Um, and so you get really nervous during mating season in like October, November time because they get aggressive. It's like you get too close to a doe. All I was doing was trying to get out of my car one night, coming home from Texas Birdhouse. And as I'm getting out of the car, it's like coming up and attacking the side of my car. My door is all scratched on the side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he wins today. I'm not going to go home. Pulled out, went around the block a couple times, came back. He was still there. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go get some food, pee somewhere. Couldn't believe it. That's crazy. Yeah. He's always around. I'll I'll, uh, send you a picture the next time I see him. Oh, wow. That's crazy. You couldn't even get out of your car. No. Uh, morning, noon, and night, you can see the, um, there's about 13 doe that live in my, my backyard. 
Oh, so your house is like you're you yeah. run harem. Yeah. No, <laughs> like you open up the window and they all come. <laughs> you, you got to hang out. Yeah, exactly. We have a creek that runs through the backyard, so we have fresh water. So animals typically tend to stick around. Do you feed them? No. <laughs> You're not supposed to, but they're so cute. Well, my friend who is not an animal person at all, she has, she, I, we call her Snow White because she has every critter you can imagine has shown up in her backyard at one time or another. And at one point she had, um, all this stuff going on in her kitchen and weird stuff was happening and like stuff would be knocked over or whatever. And she kept setting mouse traps and she couldn't figure out what it was. And she walked into the kitchen one morning and all of her plants were knocked over and sitting in the middle of them was a chipmunk. And he had lived there for like a month before she oh, wow. figured out what he was. And then she had to figure out how to catch him and get rid of him. Yeah. She was living with a chipmunk. Oh, luckily nothing like that in her house. Before this one, we actually had that problem with um, a squirrel came in. Like, yeah. like a Christmas vacation? Yes. And I was home. I it was home with the fever for some reason. And I told Andy I thought something was in the house, like a mouse or something. And he was like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm laying in bed and like the door comes flying open of the closet and I flew back. And I'm like, what is it? The squirrel came out and like stares at me. I'm like, Andy, there's a squirrel in the house. He's like, no, there's not. You have a fever. You're tired. You're delusional. You've lost it. Oh, I just lost power in these. Can you still hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. She, uh, he finally came across the squirrel in the basement like a week later. So it just lived in your house for all that time? Was it alive? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. My brother-in-law, they had a squirrel at his parents' house. And um, his brother went to try to catch it. And he was videotaping while his brother went to try to catch this squirrel. And the squirrel, I don't know. I think it was... It didn't chase him like, um, it didn't go on his back like uh, in Chevy Chase, but the squirrel was chasing him, like his older brother. And you can see like his brother running through the house, getting chased by the squirrel and his mom jumping up on the furniture and they're all screaming and yeah, squirrels, you know, they oh, wreak havoc. Is asking, do you have snow down in Pittsburgh? We do not. I want some. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would like, as a dog mom, I would love the ground to be hard. <laughs> because my poor house, I've been cleaning mud every day. Um, but I do actually like the snow. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I, everyone keeps thinking we have a lot of it because we're so close to Buffalo. But we didn't actually get any. Yeah. And there's, like, none in the next 10-day forecast for us. Like, I keep looking. And it's, like... It's been a really crappy winter here because it just hovers around like 40, 45 degrees and like gray. Yeah, everything's brown. Different person. Yeah, we're experiencing pretty much the same here. It's been a little lower in temperature though. Low 40s, high 30s. Yeah, just enough that like there was snow the other night whenever I left here because, uh, I noticed it was like my windshield was wet, but then when I got home, like the grass was covered, but it was gone in by morning. So yeah. that dunk. I mean, kids don't get snow days anymore anyways, but it would just still be nice to have. I like it. Um, two days before Christmas, that storm that hit Buffalo hit us too, but in a different way, we received um, pretty much like this big ice storm. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the high winds, it was a lot of fun. And uh, so the kids all knew the night before on that Thursday that they didn't have school. I was like, congratulations on your first snow day. And I talked to Raymond the next day. He's like, there's no snow. Aw, yeah. I know. Well, did you guys lose power when you had the ice storm? 
Uh, so I did not. Lauren did briefly. My power was going on and off, but it kept staying on for the most part. I was pretty fortunate. We had just like the really freezing temperatures. We didn't have ice, um, but it was like frigid cold, like in the negative 20 somethings. Um, my mom and dad lost power for like maybe six hours. Um, but it was just like a good stay home. I like when it snows because it's like a good like time to get cozy and then you can yeah. stay home and, you know, you just have like a good reason to slow it down a notch. I don't know. <laughs> well, Tammy in the comments, um, she is uh, on the Midwest. She was affected by that one storm that came through and um, where they lost the whole Midwest lost power. Oh, wow. Uh, a few years ago. So she bought a bunch of our cage lanterns when we first got them. So mm -hmm. that was the first thing I got because we lose power all the time um, when the sale started. I, all I kept thinking about was her. Oh, yeah, I did look at those. I kind of regret not getting one. I might have to shop again. <laughs> oh, darn, right? Oh, darn it. Hmm. I'm I so excited for them because we lose power all the time here. Yeah, we usually, we're pretty good. Well, here, down at the studio, I don't lose power, but I lose my internet, like, on the daily, and that's really annoying. Um, yeah. I don't know why I'm... I don't know. At one point there was a wreck outside and somebody hit the telephone pole and the telephone pole went down. And when it went down, they snapped the wires, like whenever they came to like clear the road or whatever, they snapped the wires. And one of the wires was my internet service. So I didn't have for like four days and we couldn't figure out why, because it's like the router works, everything plugged in. Yeah. It was because the wire was hanging on the side of the building and we had to wait for them to come and run a whole new line. And it still kind of stinks, but it's not even weather dependent. It's just, you know, thin. Yeah. Now, do you have a live tonight that you have to do? I'm not doing a live tonight. I will probably go live tomorrow. Well, I'll be ready to watch that one. Good. <laughs> good, good. Yes, I am. Um, I was live in the private group last night, and then tonight I'm live with you, and tomorrow I'll probably go live on the main page. So, nice. yeah, tomorrow evening, come hang out with me. Yeah, what time are you going live, 9? Probably 9, 9.30. Depends. We have a basketball game tomorrow, so. That's the perfect time for me. Oh, good. That's the perfect time for me, so. I try to go live during the day, and... It just never happens. Like the day, I swear, you drop the kids off at school and then it feels like five minutes and then it's time to pick them up and then make dinner and do all the things. And then so 9, 930 is when I can be like, okay, now I can do what I need to do. So, yep. You know, we tried to start going live a little bit earlier just because people request that. Um, but it gets hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially because, like, the busy season for school. Like, Lauren's really pushing hard to get Lenny in uh, volleyball. So that way the seasons don't overlap for the kids. <laughs> well, that's smart. I, I was actually with the ball the other day, like, teaching her how to volley. She'll, she, they won't overlap, but she'll never get a break either. Also true. But like, she doesn't get a break anymore. Well, that's true. Yeah, I know. We're gearing up for, like, we're in basketball season now and then baseball season will start. And that's four teams between the two kids. And, um, you know, my husband doesn't know when to say no. And he's already agreed to be the tournament director, coach one of the boys baseball teams and coach one of the boys basketball or no football teams. And then like somebody came and asked me to be the secretary of the boosters and like all this stuff. And he's like, I guess this is the stage of life we're in, you know, like, just so now, like every time I cook dinner, I cook two and put one in the freezer because I know it's coming. Like I, I have to brace myself for that season from like March to November where you just eat, sleep, drink, breathe baseball and football. Yeah. Lauren just got her schedule tournament uh, yesterday. Oh, yeah. Raymond. I'm curious if we'll ever cross paths because we jo joined a new team this year. So. I, that would be cool if we crossed paths at some point. Oh, that would be. 
Mm-hmm. Especially like, like a full weekend tournament. What's that? Especially like one of the full weekend tournaments so they can go watch one game and then go over to the other. Yeah. Get some Uber Eats. Some sippy cups. Yeah. It'll be fun. Our sippy cups are pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go, girlfriend, because I need to go something else. And it was fun hanging out with you. Your following direction skills are improving. I'm quite proud of you. I would give you a B plus. I was doing so well on the, um, the barriers. Well, yeah, the bear looks kind of like a rainbow. Well, that's what I couldn't figure out why the lines. But as soon as you said that, Jay, I'm like, oh, we're making some sort of animal. I should probably, I'll have to work on some more for another time. But I am you Monday, right? Yeah. Okie dokie. I will see you Monday, same time, same place. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun hanging out. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya.